A warm welcome to You're a Wizard, a magical sleep saga inspired by the world of Harry Potter, where you are the main character. As you take a moment to get comfortable, remind yourself that this is your story, and there are no limits to what you can add to this adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. So be sure to bring along your own unique imagination. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder, and adventure as we continue our Harry Potter sleep saga. All of a sudden, you find yourself in a quiet, hidden corner of the castle, facing an arched alcove. Inside is a huge stone statue in the shape of a powerful eagle, its wings stretched out towards you. The giant places a reassuring hand on your shoulder, guiding you inside the alcove. He takes a step back, and with a smile, speaks the words, Sherbet Lemon. There is a low rumble under your feet, and in the next moment, the stone eagle bows its head and starts to turn on the spot. Suddenly, you feel yourself being lifted and a stone staircase begins to spiral up around the eagle. As you slowly turn, rising up bit by bit, you watch the shadowy figure of your gentle giant begin to fade out of sight. Still, this magical castle never fails to surprise you. Then, the winding staircase stops, and you are met by a tall wooden door with golden handles in the middle. A nervous excitement bounces between you and your friend, and with a shared smile, you open the door together. There is a deep, powerful magic in this room. You feel it all around you. The atmosphere is quiet and subdued. A brazier of blue fire gives off a low crackle, illuminating one corner of the room in a rich sapphire, and a fine gold dust dances through the air and twinkles with delight. The wall on your left is made entirely of thick bookshelves, towering from floor to ceiling and packed full of dusty hardbacks. They appear to be in some kind of order, although it is impossible to decipher. Peppering the wall on your right is a collection of oil paintings depicting all the previous headmasters and mistresses of the school. There are too many paintings to count, but the eldest, perched at the very top, is dated back over a thousand years. Some of the teachers are taking a morning nap 
and others are quietly watching over you, guarding this enchanted room. Hanging above you is a small chandelier of candles, perfectly still and unflickering, blanketing the office in a soft yellow light. Two white pillars stand proudly on each side of a wooden desk in front of you. Atop the desk is a purple and gold lantern that pulses in a steady rhythm. Behind the pillars are two sets of white stairs leading up to a raised platform. In the middle of this platform is the silhouette of an enormous globe, rotating in mid-air perfectly on its axis. As your eyes flick down, you spot the very same bird of ruby and gold from this morning, perched to one side of the desk and looking right at you. As you move closer, you realize that this is no ordinary bird, but a phoenix. Your best friend squeezes your arm, admitting in a low whisper that they had no idea phoenixes were even real. And yet, here one sits, right before your eyes, as clear as day. You reach out to the phoenix, and this majestic animal gently sniffs your hand. They brush their head against your palm and ruffle their feathers in excitement. In the next moment, the phoenix steps gently onto your forearm, looking at you in complete trust as they tilt their head left to right. There is a soft beauty to this innocent creature, and the watery eyes of the phoenix radiate a powerful love and reveal the knowledge of many lives lived. They gaze at you like an old friend, and already you feel a deep connection to this wonderful animal. From above you, a calm voice calls out, the tears of a phoenix can heal even the deepest of wounds. As your head flicks up to the platform, you see the flowing white beard of the headmaster hanging over you as he leans on the railing, a twinkle in his eye. The wily old professor shuffles down the steps to your right, lifting his cloak just above his feet and muttering under his breath. It is mostly inaudible, but you catch something about a little bit of twirling toffee stuck in his teeth. Suddenly, standing for the first time in his presence, you feel a strong paternal love coming from him. You can see how much he adores this castle and all who dwell within. He might look like a gentle grandfather, but age is not to be mistaken for weakness, for in front of you now stands arguably the most powerful wizard who ever lived. The unrivaled magical prowess and wisdom of the headmaster is clear to see. Even the characters in these enchanted oil paintings appear to revel and bask in his grace. And yet, despite all this, he is humble, gentle, and uncommonly kind. The headmaster gives the phoenix a gentle pat on the head, and he tells you that they have been his friend for as long as he can remember. The phoenix can never truly die, he adds, 
scratching his old companion under the chin. For even after their long life comes to an end, the phoenix bursts into a magical flame, only to be reborn from the ashes. A new body of youth and vitality, but a mind and spirit as old as the earth. This is a true bird of the heavens. They are a guardian of this world, and now clearly a guardian of you, the professor adds with a wink. Good friends are hard to come by, he says, so be sure to keep them close. And with that, the old professor lifts the elegant phoenix from your arm and places it back upon its perch. Now to business. I understand that neither of you were able to find a suitable broomstick before your journey here, so I took the liberty of picking them out myself. I hope you don't mind, but I do have a good eye for these things. And with that, the headmaster flicks his wand effortlessly, and two long parcels lift from behind the desk. They drift towards you and land right into your arms. The wrapping paper falls away, revealing a rich mahogany broomstick with smooth bristles in a bulb shape, one for each of you. The elegance and beauty of this broomstick is unlike anything you have ever seen. The wood is finished with a soft varnish and is weightless in your hands. On each side are two silver footrests and inscribed at the very top are your initials coupled with your house crest. The kind old professor lets out a low chuckle as you both give a wide-eyed stare. He reminds you, with a raise of his eyebrows, that these are not toys and must be treated with respect. Together with your friend, you thank this wonderful professor over and over again, until with a soft smile he raises his hand. Consider it a welcome gift, and use it well, he adds with a mischievous wink. Now, best be off, or you might be late for your flying lesson, and I wouldn't want to see you in detention on your first day. And with that, you bid him a good morning, wave goodbye to your phoenix guardian, and run back to the alcove racing down the spiral steps, chuckling away with your best friend. As you reach the bottom, you run through the maze-like corridors, retracing your steps from your journey with the giant. Before you know it, you arrive at a small archway that opens out onto the castle grounds. You can hear the murmur of students gathering outside. You take a moment to compose yourself and casually walk down the steps out onto the vast green field, trying not to appear out of breath. Your group is gathered around a tall, thin witch with spiked grey hair and deep-set amber eyes. She clears her throat, <coughs> looking right at you, and the class falls into silence. For a moment, you have no idea what to expect. But then her stern face softens to a knowing smile as she looks at your brand new broomsticks shining in the morning sun. With a sudden bouncing energy, she calls out 
that it is time to begin. Professor, or Madame, as she prefers to be called, instructs you all to create two long lines facing one another and place your broomstick on the floor underneath your dominant hand. This is it, the moment you have been waiting for, your very first taste of magic. Madame insists that the first rule of flying is confidence. If you do not believe that you can do it, then you never will. Now there is no need to worry, she adds. I will be here guiding you all on this journey. And if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. To begin, she continues, raise your hand above your broomstick and give a firm command with the word up. You call out the command, but your broomstick only twitches on the ground. Just then, you hesitate and peer down the long line of students. As the muffled commands continue to call out, you see every single broomstick still on the floor. Some haven't even flinched, while others swing left to right, or hover an inch or two above the ground, refusing to go any further. Right now, it would be so easy to give up, or to let doubt overwhelm you. After all, you have only known about magic for a few days. You wonder if perhaps this is all too difficult, or if there has been some mistake and your letter was never meant for you. But then you stop that thought, and instead you remind yourself of all the times that you have pushed on through adversity and overcome many challenges. You know that there is a strong resilience in you, and you are capable of doing whatever you set your mind to. A new surge of confidence bubbles in your stomach now, and with clear conviction you give the order up. Your broomstick flies up effortlessly, landing perfectly in your palm. Your eyes widen in amazement, and you grip it tight, a beaming smile across your face. You realize that the words we use and the things we tell ourselves can be so powerful, and you vow from here on in to believe in what you are capable of and to treat yourself with kindness and compassion. Madame notices your success and gives an encouraging smile, spurring on the rest of the group who are still struggling. You look to your best friend who is having a hard time of it, their broomstick hops up and down, reluctant to go all the way. They turn to you in desperation, asking if they are good enough to do this. You place a hand on their shoulder and tell them to take a breath, to relax and think of everything that they have achieved already in life. You remind them of the incredible person they have grown to be and encourage them to think of themselves as you think of them. They whisper a thank you and hover their hand over their broomstick. With a resounding up, their broom leaps off the floor and firmly lands in their palm. They turn to you, beaming with delight and the two of you share a warm embrace, reminding each other that no matter what, 
you will always be there to help. Slowly but surely, the entire class has managed to raise their broomsticks, and Madame, hands on hips, wearing a proud smile, advises you all that you are ready for the next step. She calls out to sit atop your broom and gently push off the ground, allowing yourself to hover a few inches above the grass. In perfect timing, you and your best friend straddle your brooms and gently kick off the floor, floating together happily. There is a new freedom flowing through you and you feel a deep sense of control over your body and your mind. You focus on the broom, feeling how it moves under you. If it tilts to the left, you learn to counter that with a shift to the right, and vice versa. You push the handle forward to lower yourself, and pull back gently to gain flight Madame calls out to the group that the next rule of flying is to build the bond of trust between wizard and broomstick. In the same way that the wand chooses the wizard, you have to work to earn your broomstick's respect and gain its trust. Those of you that feel confident enough, she adds, will now follow me into the air for a little bit of fun. You are confident, and you are ready to follow Madame on a new magical adventure. With an excited smile to your best friend, you both pull back gently on your brooms, and, along with a handful of other students, begin to soar up towards Madame, stopping just in line with the parapets of the castle walls. Madame leads the way, gliding higher and swooping around the many towers of the magical castle. You feel as though you are entering a deep state of tranquility. All other thoughts, concerns or worries are melting away from you and fading out of sight. In this moment, nothing else matters. Already, it feels as though you are moving as one with your broomstick. You can't quite believe how natural this feels and how quickly it all makes sense. But then again, something inside of you has always been ready for this day. Madame flies with such elegance and grace. It is wonderful to witness. She guides you now above the tallest tower of the castle, and you circle it with ease. She calls out that students are free to explore on their brooms, but to rendezvous back on the ground in five minutes. She will keep a watchful eye over you all, keeping you safe and protected. The group peels off in different directions, leaving you and your best friend hovering above the castle. As you float up here, away from everything, you feel your mind clearing, and time itself seems to slow down. 
you take in the endless castle grounds, the forest, the lake, and the mountains in the distance. It is absolutely breathtaking. And then, as if out of thin air, your phoenix guardian swoops up from below you. They turn to face you, beating their wings in a steady rhythm, encouraging you to take flight with them. Without another hesitation, you follow behind the phoenix on a sweeping journey down the side of the castle. They rear their head and peel off to the right now, heading towards the enchanted forbidden forest. You glide over the top of the purple and orange leaves that ripple in the morning breeze as you follow the path of the phoenix. From here, you feel a pulsing aura emanating from the trees below. They appear to be calling out to you, almost, enticing you to visit the forbidden forest. Your phoenix companion swoops over you in a loop, their ruby and gold feathers glistening in the morning sun, and their huge elegant wings beating in a silent rhythm. Your best friend flies by your side, and together the three of you are the spirit of freedom. In the next moment, the phoenix dives down over the trees and flies low across the grass. You follow behind, almost touching the daisies with your fingertips. They guide you now to the left of the forest and over the enormous, glistening lake. The mighty talons of the phoenix trace the water, and you follow suit by dipping your hand into the cool, misty lake as you glide along its surface. Then you sit up straight on your broomstick and stretch your arms out wide taking on the world in front of you. Your best friend joins in, and the two of you share an uncontrollable laughter, one that is brought on by an overwhelming joy. Suddenly, in the distance, and over to your right, you see the rest of your class gathering on the ground, as the last few students lower themselves back down. And with that, the mighty phoenix banks to the right and lifts off the lake, guiding you back to your class. As you approach the group, the phoenix does one last loop around you, bidding you both a fond farewell before soaring up into the sky, 
disappearing above the clouds. As you gently bring your broomstick back down, you are met with cheers and applause from the students, and from Madame, who admits that in all her years of teaching, she has never seen a display quite like that. Certainly not from a first-time flyer. And before you know it, Madame is closing off the lesson congratulating you all on a brilliant first day. You are advised to leave your broomsticks with her, and when you return to your bedroom tonight, they will be waiting for you. You place your broom down with the rest and give a heartfelt thank you to Madame. Then you join the gaggle of students now making their way back into the castle, ready for your second lesson of the day, Transfiguration. <laughs>